All right, fly fish fooders, answer me this. Does my hair look like a sheepdog? Because I'm thinking that it does. It's disturbing. Anyway, we're going to tie the Project Hopper. I'm kind of glad it's called the Project Hopper because it is a project and it's ever evolving. Um, and so we've changed a bunch of hooks out. We've changed the, the foam cutting technique and, and all those types of things. But I think we have a pretty dang good pattern. It's a little bit easier to tie now too. Thanks to Mr. Tony Thompson River Road Creations and the new Project Hopper Cutter. So, old Clinton McVottlestein, my good buddy who's a designer, drew it up in CAD for me. And uh, so here we have the body, the leg, you see that nice curvature, and the overbody thing, or the pronotum. So, perfect cuts. Uh, they were designed, they were put into CAD, and they're very precise measurements. So. I'm really happy with how this turned out. As you can see, this is my size 10. We did it in a 6, 8, and 10. I think size 10 is my favorite size. So here's another cool thing. We, we're using this um, Foley Mill Competition Heavyweight Hook. Um, it's, a, it's a strong hook. It says 3X strong, but a lot of times these barbless competition hooks can be lighter wire. But with this much foam that we're going to put on the fly, it's going to turn it over really nicely. So, without further ado, is that how you say that in French? Adieu. Adieu? Yeah, I'm not going to say it that way. Without waiting any longer, we're going to tear right into this. Okay, first things first, this is 6 millimeter cross-link foam. I like this a lot because it's really, really stiff and makes a great hopper body when we start trimming and cutting it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to lay this cutter in here and just kind of move it around so that it sticks all the way through. Six mil is about the max for the, these cutters. And now if I'm really careful and kind of pull up from this side, it will pop right out of that mold. If it doesn't, you can take some, uh, a bodkin and stick it in there and pop that out of there so anyway that's our our body um, from there we're gonna do the leg this is cool new foam from Montana fly called photo foam so there's a little bit of a trick to this the first leg that I'm gonna cut out I'm gonna do the same thing and cut it out on one side and because the bend on this foam it's not just completely round it's shaped like a little hopper leg so the other cut I'm gonna come in here and cut it out from the other side so I have a right and a left so my legs are pretty set I can just pull those off of there for the pronotum, I'm using one millimeter cross link, and I'm just going to come in here. Um, this is the proper way to cut these out, so I guess I'll follow the pattern. So there, I've got my little pronotum. Okay, so I've got one of the bodies, um, kind of a rough cut at first. And I've got these Dr. Slick tungsten scissors because there aren't teeth on them. So the first thing I'm going to do is just cut this uh, little tab off of it. And then for the top section, I'm just going to get rid of uh, the hard edges. So kind of like we did with the Moorish. Just kind of trim down just like this. Now for the bottom section, if you look at it, this part backward is going to be the abdomen. So this is going to be the thorax from here forward. So I'm going to start my cut about right here, draw a little imaginary line there, and I'm going to cut it up so that I have a nice taper built into it. So 
I've got a bit of a taper just like that and now I'm going to come in here and trim off my angled edges okay so that's our trimmed body so once I have this trimmed I'm just gonna tag it with a lighter a little bit and if you tag it with a lighter and kind of give it the the rub down a little bit it will smooth out So it doesn't have to be perfect, but just like that. Also with these legs, I'm going to take these, you can see this little tag section. It's both so that we can get them out of the cutters and also so you know where to cut. So I'm going to cut it right after it comes to that little tag, if that makes sense. Just like that. Alright, so we're gonna trim the or we're gonna cut this body now. So the best way to do that is just get um, a little blade, could be an X-Acto knife. That actually works the best. And I'm just gonna come in here and trim that or, or cut into the foam just a little bit, just barely enough for that hook to slide into. Just like that. So now that I have it cut we're going to actually put a pre-color job on this one. So this, I'll show you, this is my prized marigold sharpie. They don't make this anymore, but I'm going to use it anyway because the goldenrod is fairly close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and kind of color up the, the thorax a little bit. And then for the back of the fly, I'm going to take a, a fine tip brown sharpie and make little stripes with the brown one and then also with the same color marigold marker. Yeah, this is painstaking detail, but it's definitely worth it. And then, typically I like to just put some little marks like this. Little cross-hatched marks or whatever. Just like that. So that's the bottom of our hopper body. Okay, the good thing about this pattern is we don't have to do knotted legs. And these are surprisingly more durable than I thought they would be when I first started tying this fly. So what we're going to do is basically poke a hole through this foam and slide this leg into it like that. So as you can see, this is kind of the part of the leg that curves up before it goes straight. I'm going to tie the leg on so it's coming down this side instead of the opposite way. So at the end of the day, it's not going to make much difference, but that's kind of how the cutter was designed. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn that over. I'm going to take a bodkin and poke a hole through that. I like to use this plastic mat for it and slide it up onto the bodkin as best you can. And this is kind of a thicker bodkin so that works. It kind of stretches the foam out. So I'm going to take this out and hurry and take my leg and shove it in there just like that so I'm going to do that on this side once I have that in there I can take just a little tiny bit of super glue Ooh, that's, that's too much. just like that and you've got a leg that is stuck in there and just trim that off and you're ready to go Okay, so obviously it's, it's best if you're going to do a bunch of these to do a lot of prep work. Uh, so we have a bunch of the bodies cut out. 
we have a bunch of legs and we're ready to put them together so it's a pretty quick tie at this point I like to use just 70 denier thread on this and not compress it too crazy bad um, just because it, it makes a minimal tie-in point makes kind of a cleaner fly I'm using just the the wood duck colored UTC 70 but anything that's tannish or the hopper yellow would work as well just stuff like that so I'm gonna I'm gonna twist up my thread here real quick to kind of make this a more rough body I don't want it to be super smooth because I'm gonna put super glue on it and I want it to kind of have some ridges to to really stick to the other thing is I'm gonna pre-fit this body on the hook just so that I know where to leave my thread so I'm gonna take it about down to here um, if you're using like a Daiichi 1710 which you can for this fly for sure um, you might want to you know cut your slit a little bit further back in the hopper because the hooks a little bit longer now here's another thing that that we need to mention this is the size 10 cutter but this is a size 8 hook that we're using so the size 8 hook is just a standard uh, standard length hook but I really like how how thick this hook is compared to some of the others so if you're using a 1710 you would use a size 10 the other one that's really good for this is a Gamakatsu R18 okay so once I've got that sized on there and sorry I'm being too long with the words on this but th there's a lot of explanation that that comes with this fly so just lightly douse it with some super glue and then we're just going to put that right back on where it was you check the bottom of it you can see the hooks nice up and in there and I'm just going to make some thread wraps and break my thread down in the spool what oh I know what happened this spool was all jacked and I rewound it okay so we have the the tie-in point here and at this point we're going to tie in our legs I guess I'm gonna trim those I'll trim the rubber legs so they're about the same length as the foam so the one thing when we were developing this fly I realized that hopper legs kind of sit up at an angle like this so if you're tying them in like that you don't necessarily want that as much as you know just kind of up at a slight angle so what I'm going to do here is just tie it in so I'm just barely catching the point of that leg and you're gonna see that it kind of splays out too far and there's a way to fix that so don't worry about that and as you can see I'm just using minimal thread wraps alright so both legs are tied in they're splayed out a little bit too far based on what I was looking at when I first started playing with this pattern um, you don't want I mean a, a natural hopper sitting on the water has legs that are pretty close to its body in comparison to this so what I did is I have a little drop of super glue on this bodkin and I'm just gonna come in here right where that leg attaches to the body right about there and I'm going to now push those in so that the super glue can can set up and it will hold those legs where we want just like that so the other cool thing about this pattern is if you catch hoppers near your stream you're gonna see that they have a lot of variation as far as what the the back legs are so you can find them that are green you can find them that are red you can find them that are even blue so mess around with the colors on the back legs I, I like this kind of clear tan 
uh, coloration. Um, so once we're here, I'm just going to take this thread and I'm going to come up halfway on this thorax. And if I squeeze this in as I pull it tight, you can see that that thins out that head quite a bit. And the hopper thorax and head are actually fairly narrow. So instead of cutting the foam more narrow, I just kind of squeeze it with my finger and it takes shape just like that. So here we are ready to tie in the wing. So on the last one, we tied in a wing of elk hair. And it looks cool and everything, but it really wasn't doing much for the fly. I mean, maybe it added a little bit of buoyancy, but um, I'm just going to use EP trigger point fiber. Uh, this is pale morning done. So I'm just going to tie that in right here, and it's eventually going to fold over itself. So I'm just going to take this and trim it back just like that looks terrible right now. From here we're ready to tie in this pronotum piece. So I'm just going to take this little tab and cut it off. And also another thing that I've done with this fly is I've eliminated the antenna. I just don't think that they add much to the pattern. They're more of a pain in the butt to get to sit correctly. So from here I'm just going to take this pronotum and I'm going to lay that on top of the, the hook or on top of the body and just barely grab it with my thread. So as you can see it makes a nice little transition point for my fly. Transition point. It's not a transition point. It makes a nice little pronotum. So as you can see, it's perfectly sized for that, that size of fly. Now the only thing that's left, um, really, tying-wise, is to add some front legs. So I'm going to take more of these centipede legs. I'm going to tie in one set on one side, flip it over, tie in another set. And keep in mind that the front legs on a hopper are relatively short. The other thing is we're not knotting these front legs either, and that's probably the biggest stress of the, the Moorish hopper that I've run into. So there are our front legs. So I'm just going to push those forward, trim them all at the same time, and now they're all the same length. So the final step is just to add a little indicator. You would think, well, why do you need an indicator? But yes, this fly can sit fairly low. So I just have a piece of 2 millimeter foam in yellow and I'm just going to tie that in right on the top just like that and trim it with one side longer than the other just a little guy like that that'll make him more visible so instead of whip finishing this I kinda wanna limit my thread wraps so I'm, I'm actually not even gonna use the brush I'm gonna get my bodkin and get down in here. I'll try to do it so you can see and just super glue right in that little crease. Now if I bring my thread up to inside that indicator and trim it right there I'm good. So from here instead of having to get your marker in and mark it all up it's already done that. It's already done for you and now uh, I, I do like to come back in with some super glue and lay that all along the bottom of the fly on my thread wraps and back here in this crease. Some Sharpies will change color once you hit it with super glue. This one's doing it a little bit but not too bad. Sorry for the tool noise. Crap. Savage. And then for the final step, we're going to draw little eyes on them. On those little angled pieces. And 
there you have it the project hopper done with the project hopper cutter if you prep this fly uh, with a whole bunch of bodies you can tie them up fairly quickly so give them a tie another good color that I use with this is gray with kind of an olive and black striping on the bottom of it anyway like subscribe click the bell buy stuff from our store the end fly fish food uh, store.flyfishfood.com Thank <laughs> you.